Okay, so it is time for the second talk, and uh, we will hear Walter Struntz from the Technical University President, and this time the talk is dealing with the uh, non markovian quantum dynamics. Please, Walter. Yeah, thank you, Yuki. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for in inviting me, uh, presenting these results. Uh, and I hope, of course, that uh, we will meet again in person soon. Uh, this, is, this is a project that, that came about uh, through a very nice uh, collaboration with many people involved in, in many different places, as you can see here. I should mention that uh, Valentin and Kai, they are the, the PhD students in my group that contributed uh, significantly to all of that. And then, of course, uh, as I said, it's, it's really a nice uh, European <laughs> collaboration. So um, this is about, this is a talk about non-Markovian quantum dynamics, as, as I have talked about many times um, now, in combination really with uh, continuous measurement. And, and this combination, I think, is, is a result um, that, that to some extent I've been, or we have been trying to achieve for some time, and, and now we found a way to, to formulate all that. So what is it all about? Uh, I will, in this talk, give, give some introduction uh, so, so that all of us um, are, are on the same level in, uh, com with respect to what we mean by continuous measurement or monitoring and the role that quantum trajectories play in that um, description. And then I, I uh, explain a little bit about ways to deal with non-Markovian open system dynamics. And there are hierarchical schemes that turned out to be fairly efficient in describing strongly coupled non-Markovian open system dynamics. And an important application of all these methods are physical systems that emerge in cavity QED. And so the application I will then show are systems of cavity QED, and, and those are the systems for which um, this combination of continuous measurement and non-Markovian local dynamics will be applied to at the, at the end of my talk. Okay, so I start with the usual uh, open system introduction. Um, we are, we're interested in, in some open system that is embedded in some environment. The system may well be driven, say, by some external fields or so. And uh, we use the usual machinery of open system dynamics. <clears throat> and then, of course, we would like to know what is the state of the open system or maybe uh, what, what is the stationary state of, of such a dynamics. Um, maybe even it, it could be possible to derive a master equation for the dynamics of this open system. Um, in, when we do deal with open systems, however, in particular in, in a quantum optical uh, setting, then there is a bit more that can be said about such open system dynamics. And that comes from the fact that now we could use the environmental degrees of freedom. Think, of course, uh, of, of the light. The, if the environment is, is, is light, then we could simply observe the light that comes out of this open system. And by monitoring um, the environment, basically, we can condition the dynamics of this open system on the observed on the, uh, on the measurements that we observe. So the, the aspect I want to stress here is that we, of course, we do have theories where we do not ignore or trace over the environmental degrees of freedom, but we actually monitor or measure in a continuous way these environmental degrees of freedom. And so everything we, we say about the system dynamics, I said previously, is now conditioned on some uh, continuous measurement record obtained from observing the environmental degrees of freedom. And that, of course, is, is all well known and has been established uh, many, many years ago in the context of quantum optical systems. So 
the, the state of the system becomes a condition state of the system and, and also the stationary state or maybe the dynamics itself um, will be conditioned on the measurement record and that is what we call then a theory of quantum trajectories here. As I have said, all that comes from quantum optical settings and uh, throughout my talk, uh, think of a typical such a, such a setup where you have, say, um, atoms or atomic degrees of freedom cup coupled to some cavity mode and the cavity, however, uh, these mirrors are, are leaky at some end, so we have some, some dissipation, the photons leak out of the cavity, and we could typically describe that in a quantum optical setting by a, a JKSL master equation. Now the um, the continuous monitoring of the light that leaks out of these mirrors can be taken into account in these Markovian settings and as I said it is well known and one particular equation that I will um, to some extent focus on is this particular equation. Um, these are quantum trajectories that correspond to what is called heterodyne measurement. It doesn't really matter too much what exactly that, that represents. So there are different kind of stochastic Schrodinger equations of the type that I show here um, that correspond to different kind of measurements on this output field. And they lead, since we do not trace over the environment but observe the environment, we have a stochastic evolution of pure states of this open system here, such that each realization corresponds to a stochastic realization of the continuous measurement. And all, all of that is, of course, uh, long established and, and well known. Now, um, the, 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 the connection between these two types of description uh, emerges from averaging over all measurement results. So the unobserved dynamics then corresponds to an average over all these quantum trajectories. Now, this is the setting. Um, now, I have been trying to uh, generalize quantum trajectories to non-Markovian situations for a long time, as, as many of you know. And so to describe non-Markovian open system dynamics, um, the best way to start, I guess, is to start from a unitary model of everything. And in particular, um, modeling the environment in terms of bosonic harmonic oscillators allows us to generalize this uh, Markovian quantum state diffusion to the non-Markovian regime. And I just briefly want to, um, because the ideas that I will later develop uh, will, will be based on these things. Um, so the, the relevant quantity describing the effect of the bath onto the open system is encoded in these models in what we call the bath correlation function. And that is now a general function. It's no longer the memory, if you like, uh, of the bath is no longer zero, but it has a finite memory leading to typically non-Markovian dynamics. And the trajectories that emerge from such a unitary model of everything, they emerge from solving the Schrodinger equation of everything. So the capital Psi of T is really the state, the joint state of the open system and the environment. And if you expand the state in terms of coherent state with respect to the environmental degrees of freedom, you may well find system states conditioned on the coherent state labels of all the environmental degrees of freedom. And indeed, these, all these environmental degrees of freedom, they combine in these models to a single time dependent function that actually then plays the role of a stochastic process. And in this way, um, you find an equation that corresponds to the system part of an overall global 
pure state describing the dynamics of everything of system and environment. And the problem uh, used to be that even though this equation is, is nice and exact, uh, well, it is exact, but it's not so nice because we have this uh, functional derivative showing up and uh, we needed to find ways to, to deal with this functional derivative. Um, and just a, a last word about this is that indeed, this is the generalization of the usual um, Markov JKSL uh, regime, since if indeed this path correlation function is memoryless, is, is a delta function, then indeed uh, this equation recovers the Markovian version of the quantum state diffusion equation known from heterodyne measurement of the environment. Now, these non-Markovian trajectories, and now I come to, to the second part, uh, we do have a theory for non-Markovian quantum trajectories, as I have just explained, and uh, we were able to use that in practice by a hierarchical scheme. And this is a, a method we call HOPS, a hierarchy of pure states. So let me say a few things about this hierarchical approach, uh, because that will play a role also later. Um, the motivation of that is, is a similar idea um, that has been used before in, in the language of, of density matrices. And uh, Tanimura was, was one of the, well, was the, the, the main um, person behind these efforts. So this method of a hierarchy um, used for density operators was called hierarchical equations of motion. And it, it is best understood if we assume the bath has a correlation function that is a simple exponential. And you see that in that case, um, this equation can be replaced by a hierarchy of equations involving, let me just skip, um, where you replace this term that involves this functional derivative simply by a new state. You just rename this thing by psi one and the state that you're looking for is, is the psi zero. And then you derive an evolution equation for this object here. And in so doing, you get a hierarchy of such states, psi zero, psi one and so on, psi k. And solving this hierarchy of equations simultaneously um, gets rid of the memory term in your non-Markovian equation and allows you to determine the desired psi zero state that is the relevant state to determine the open system dynamics. Now, in general, um, a bath correlation function will not be such a simple exponential. So um, what one has to do in general is to, to approximate the exact bath correlation function by some by a sum of such exponentials. There are also more general functions you can use, but anyway, you need some um, fit basically, some, some approximations, some fitting procedure to um, obtain a good representation of the bath correlation function. And I should also mention that uh, th this version that I show here are a set of linear equations. And in order to be numerically efficient, uh, in order to use these quantum trajectories, in particular in the strong coupling regime, you really have to go to a nonlinear version that allows you for a far better uh, statistical sampling of, of the density operator. And as I want to stress, um, starting from these hierarchical equations of motion, what we call HOPS, the hierarchy of pure states, you do get uh, back also to the hierarchical equations for density operators. So there's a direct relation to this uh, hierarchical equations of motion for density operators. And let me just briefly sketch that because um, we will encounter that again a bit later. So 
The whole construction of these non-Markovian quantum trajectories is such that the reduced density operator is recovered as the ensemble mean where we use uh, these um, Gaussian stochastic processes that drive these stochastic equations. Now, in a hierarchical scheme, um, the objects that we really want in the end the reduced density operators is obtained from the zeroth order state in this hierarchical scheme. Um, now looking at that, you find that it is useful to define states rho and m with two indices n and m that you define as an average over these dyads consisting of members of the hierarchy of pure states of different hierarchy depth n and m and if you define your rho and m according to this uh, prescription you do end up with a hierarchy of equations that couple these auxiliary density matrix matrices with indices n and m and they are coupled to uh, different members in your hierarchy. So E could be plus or minus one here. So in this, um, in, in this setting, as you can see, starting from a hierarchy of pure states, you may well end up with a hierarchy of density operators that you can also try to solve numerically in order to determine strongly coupled non-Markovian quantum dynamics. And, and whatever uh, you choose, well, as always depends on, on, the, on the problem that you would like uh, to solve. Now I'm telling you all that because, um, yeah, this is just what I've just said because these uh, cavity QED systems are ideally are, are an ideal uh, playing field uh, to, to apply these methods because um, we basically have two alternative or complementary maybe ways of thinking about such uh, cavity QED experiments. Um, in, the, in the usual approach, you would say, well, there is a, as I have said earlier, there is a Markovian master equation for the joint system of atom and cavity mode. And that joint system of atom and cavity mode is coupled to a Markovian, well, it's described by a Markovian master equation. Now, so, so the system, what we would call system, open system is the combined system of atom and cavity mode. Now, if you, if you look at the dynamics of the atom only, um, you can say that the cavity mode plus the outside field actually acts as an environment. And in that case, um, that environment is described by the damped cavity mode. So the atom sees a damped cavity mode, which is described then by a bath correlation function of precisely this exponentially decaying form that is ideal for the application of these hierarchical methods to describe open system dynamics. And as a, as a simple uh, example here, the simplest possible example, if you think of a, of a, of a two level atom here, coupled to a Lorentzian, which is precisely a exponentially decaying bath correlation function, uh, you, you see that we can, we can solve for individual quantum trajectories. And if you look at this uh, third example where the, bath, where the spectral density is fairly narrow, so you're, you're uh, way off the usual assumption of a Markovian dynamics where you say the spectral density has to be uh, independent of frequency over a broad range. Um, so here you're, you're deep in non-Markovian uh, dynamics and you see that if you look at the trajectories, uh, they, they start at some, um, oh, I didn't show what I, here I show the expectation value of sigma z, sorry, I, that's missing here. And you see the atom decays, so 
loses or, or stores a, a photon in the cavity mode, but since the cavity is still fairly, fairly good, um, this photon can also come back to the atom and re-excite the atom at least temporarily, and then it decays again and it gets re-excited and so on and so on. And this is obviously some non-Markovian dynamics, but there is a trajectory description of that, as you see with these uh, gray curves. These gray curves are individual solutions of this non-Markovian quantum trajectory theory. So, um, uh, I want to, to use these ideas now to describe uh, experiments in, in uh, cavity QED, modern experiments in cavity QED, and they are performed in, in a setting where there are many, many atoms in such a cavity. And not only are there many atoms in a cavity, um, there are now also many experiments where they use many, many different modes inside this cavity. So these are multi-mode cavities um, with many atoms inside these multi-mode cavities. I mean, these modes are always there, but these are experiments where they actually manage to excite to couple the atoms within the cavity to not only the main mode, but also um, many different modes. And in this way, that's, that's one motivation to do these experiments. Um, you, can, you can basically tune the interaction between different atoms because they couple to different modes of this cavity. And I just uh, give you a list of, of uh, different applications and, and experiments here where such multi-mode cavities with many, many atoms has been used over the over recent years um, to study all kinds of, of interesting physics. So this is a, this is a kind of uh, a setup that is, that is used in, in many groups with, with great success. Now the overall challenge for a theoretical description of all these experiments is, of course, you need to take into account all these many, many atoms within the cavity. You need to take into account all these different cavity modes within the cavity. And in the end, all of that is, is leaking to the outside world. So this is a, is a dissipative system. And as I have already explained before, there are two ways to look at these, at these systems. Um, these are open systems, but you can basically shift the, the border of, of what you consider the system and what you consider the environment. So on the one hand, you could say, um, sort of the traditional point of view would say, well, inside the cavity, we have these atoms, we have these cavity modes, this is the system, and they couple to the outside world. And in that case, of course, we are in, in Markovian master equation, um, we, we can use a Markovian master equation. Now, as the dimension of, these, of the system is obviously large, we have many atoms, we have very many modes, you can already guess that it might be youth, useful to consider the atoms only as your system. In particular, since you might be interested in atomic properties, you, you might only really be interested in the state of the atoms. And in that case, you would say, well, my system is, is the atoms only, and they couple both to a large environment that is now no longer just a, a broadband environment, but is more like, as I have shown earlier, an environment consisting of Lorentzians, of, it's, it's a kind of structured environment and leads to non-Markovian dynamics on the level of the atoms. And both these descriptions are, of course, perfectly uh, equivalent. Um, and the difference is that here you have a large Hilbert space for the system, while in this setting of uh, part of that Hilbert space, the cavity modes, is considered to be part of the environment. Now, if you want to describe the dynamics of all that, the advantage here is that you can use standard Markov theory 
whereas here you have a smaller Hilbert space. But then, of course, um, here the atoms will follow some non Markovian dynamics, and you need uh, a more elaborate uh, theory to describe that dynamics. So, um, yeah, here we know exactly what to do. Here we can use, um, and, and in this field, often people use what is called the bad cavity limit, I should mention. So, so they can adiabatically eliminate the cavity modes. Uh, but it turned out that now in these modern experiments, uh, this approximation is no longer really a, an, an acceptable approximation. And therefore, these hierarchical methods can now be used uh, with, with great benefit for these systems. Now, all of that uh, is, is basically known and, and established. Um, what, what we wanted to, the question we wanted to answer is the following. So what, what happens now if you do measurements on the external field, as you do in quantum optics, like homodyne measurement or heterodyne measurement, as I have explained earlier. And we know perfectly well what to do in such situations when we consider the inside of this cavity as your system. Then, of course, we know perfectly well what to do. We have standard Markovian quantum trajectories for the joint atomic cavity state psi AC. And this lowercase c should indicate um, that it is a conditional state we, we measure. So think of uh, homodyning, say. So we, we observe the external field that leaks out of the cavity and that allows us to describe dynamically the state, the joint state of atom and cavity modes inside. Now, what we would like to have effectively, what we really would like to know is not necessarily the full state of atom and cavity, but it's really the atomic state alone. So we would like to trace this state over the cavity degrees of freedom here, the, the modes of the cavity, to obtain the atomic state conditioned on the observation outside. And well, it's clear what to do. You could determine this pure state from the usual quantum trajectory theory, from the Markovian usual quantum trajectory theory, and trace over the cavity degrees of freedom. But in practice, this is uh, hard, uh, at least for these multi-mode, many atom uh, experiments that, that are now being performed. So what we'd like to have is a description that directly gives us the state of the atom conditioned on the measurement outside that cavity. And this is exactly what we have uh, achieved in, in this paper that I have mentioned in the beginning. And I want to sort of sketch the derivation and the ideas that go into that. And I give you some results also. Let me check on time. I hope that's still fine. Okay. So um, let me explain how we actually find this uh, way, this hierarchical way of finding a dynamical description for these kind of situations. Well, the starting point, as I have said, is the well-known measurement theory of, of the situation where we consider the atoms and the internal, the, the cavity modes as your open system, as your measured open system, then we can use the usual quantum trajectory theory as established uh, long, long, long ago in the 90s and so on. And they take the form of, of stochastic Schrodinger equations, uh, depending, of course, on what you measure. You know the quantum jump equations and the quantum state diffusion and so on and so on. Um, what I explain here is based on, on homodyning, but the same could be done for all of these different measurement schemes that you can think of. Now, we're not, oops, um, 
This equation can only be solved for fairly small atom numbers and cavity mode numbers since well, this Hilbert space just gets too, too far too large far too quickly. So we would like in some way, uh, in some sense, we would like to trace over the cavity degrees of freedom of this equation. And that is precisely what we do. And of course, we, um, we follow very much the, the ideas that I have presented earlier in, in the derivation of non-Markovian quantum trajectory. So we start from the homodyning equation for atom and cavity. And then we use coherent states, just as earlier for, for the non-Markovian quantum state diffusion for the cavity degrees of freedom, for the modes, for the many modes possibly inside the cavity. And in so doing, you get um, an equation that, as you, you can see here, um, that involves complex numbers y. Um, well, they are the labels of the coherent states of the cavity modes. And then you can define very similar to the hierarchy of pure states that I have presented earlier. You basically um, build a hierarchy for the atomic states conditioned on the coherent states of the cavity modes. This is, of course, an exact expansion uh, in, in coherent states, so there's no approximation involved. But you will find that you have um, orders of derivatives with respect to these coherent state labels similar to that functional derivative that we have for the non-Markovian quantum state diffusion trajectories. And if you do that, you end up with a, a hierarchy of pure states, of atomic pure states that you could think of as representing um, states of the atoms conditioned on a certain state of the cavity mode, Y. Now, all of that is conditioned on the continuous observation uh, outside the cavity from the original quantum trajectory description. And now we basically combine the continuous measurement, the Markovian continuous measurement on the outside with a non-Markovian dynamical theory in terms of a hierarchy and we are able to derive, similar to what I have said earlier, to derive a, a hierarchy of density matrix matrices, rho and m, as averages over the cavity degrees of freedom with dyads of different hierarchy depth of these pure states psi n. And well, this is now a bit technical, of course, it uh, doesn't really matter too much all the details. In the end, you end up with a um, stochastic equation of motion, a hierarchical stochastic uh, hierarchy of equations of motion for atomic matrices that are coupled. So, so that's a, it's a hierarchy. And the zero zero component of that is exactly the, the real uh, density operator of the atoms now conditioned on the continuous measurement on the outside. And well, maybe I can- Walter, Walter, a question. Yeah. The, uh, the hierarchy is uh, infinite, right? The hierarchy is infinite indeed, yes. Okay. And, and it's, it's a matter of, of checking numerically when, when you can stop. I see, okay. And typical hierarchy deaths are five or, or eight or six or so. I see, okay. In, in practice. So this, this converges fairly, fairly rapidly indeed. Depends of course on the coupling strength and, and the decay rates and, and so on and so on. But it is infinite indeed. It, it doesn't, I mean, the, the hierarchy is, is infinite. Yes, yes. You couple, to, you couple to higher order states all the time, yes. But in practice, you, you just determine numerically whether the results have converged and then you stop. 
Okay, so um, yeah, this is just the same uh, for multi-mode cavities. All that can be done for multi-mode cavities too. And let me just give you some some examples how how it how it works or, or what it what it shows. Um, this is the the simplest case yet again of a single qubit here. Um, James Cummings essentially coupled to a Lorentzian, so you're coupled to a single mode that is damped in the usual uh, cavity way. And now, um, as I have said, people use different uh, approximations to determine the, the measured trajectory. And I mean, this is a case where you can solve the, the pure state equation for atom plus cavity without any problems, obviously. So this is just to compare, to, just to, to be sure what we do is, is correct. Um, and, never, and nevertheless, uh, it's maybe interesting to see uh, different approximations to this, um, to this problem. What people often do is this adiabatic elimination of the cavity mode, if you do that, then indeed uh, the equation that you get, the effective atomic equation that you get uh, shows, would predict that the atomic state is, is indeed pure for all. What, what you see here is the purity of the atomic state conditioned on the measurement outcome. So it's, it's not the average atomic state, it's, it's the, let me go back to this picture here. It's the measured, uh, so we do the measurement on the outside and we would like to know the atomic state that corresponds to a particular record of the measurement. And as, as you see, um, the, the adiabatic elimination of the cavity mode would actually predict uh, a pure atomic state for all times. Then people do uh, recoupling approximations, that's already not, not too bad. So, so you see this is, and it's a stochastic equation because it's a single realization of a continuously measured uh, quantum system. So you see that this blue curve is, is already uh, okay. And, and this is the exact result, the exact uh, purity in that case. And here, here you see the Bloch sphere of that two level atom. And of course, the exact result here is obtained in two ways. Once with the hierarchy, as I have uh, I derived previously, and once just solving the full um, atom plus cavity uh, problem with the usual um, stochastic Schrodinger equation. That is, of course, possible in this uh, simple case. Now, Oops, here are the equations. Don't, you don't really need to, to look at them. And I can, of course, we can, if you want to know more, I can say that. I, I prefer to present you this second example. Now, this is more in line with the spirit of, of all that. Um, we here consider the following situation where in, this is the cavity here. And inside the cavity, there are different clusters of atoms and different cavity modes in this case three, three cavity modes and the different cluster of atoms um, interact with the different cavity modes and this is the the coupling matrix so they essentially or, or mainly significantly couple to to their mode but there is also coupling to to other modes so these atom also couple to other modes these atoms and then the, all three cavity modes are continually, continuously observed on the outside with, with usual homodyne measurement. And now, of course, you can ask many questions. You can ask, for instance, um, yeah, what's the state of um, atoms one of, of these the joint state of atoms of clusters one and three, say. Maybe you would like to, to understand how much correlated the atoms one and three are um, through this indirect interaction through the cavity modes. And now, of course, it's interesting to learn how much can we now say about the correlations between atoms at, at position one and at position three by continuous measurement of these uh, three different modes inside the cavity. And that is already a problem where the direct solution of this full 
um, Markovian dynamics inside the cavity is, is hard. And, and here you see, um, here, here we look at the entropy. So um, the, basically the, the, what you see, if, it, if it's lower, you, it means that the joint state of atoms one and three is, is purer. So it's um, by measurement, of course, you extract information and therefore um, you know more about, about the uh, atomic state conditioned on the measurement outcome. And here you see different curves. So, so this one would be basically the, the unobserved um, case that you would also get from, um, from solving the master equation. And then depending on what modes you observe here, just a single mode or, or two modes or all modes, depending on that, you can tell how, how much information you gain about the atomic states inside this cavity. And I see Jürgen is getting nervous and this, um, I, I should just mention all of that can also be um, applied to, to feedback as it has been developed for continuously measured systems. Um, and maybe I do not say much about that, uh, but it, it, it is possible, maybe that's all I, I can say easily. And you get, for instance, here, an example is that you can obtain better spin squeezing with the help of feedback. Okay, so I'm uh, at the end indeed. So what I wanted to um, tell you is that uh, there are cases where continuous measurement uh, is, is in principle, it is clear how to, to describe that, but we want to, to develop a theory that is, is an effective theory for the atomic degrees of freedom when you observe the outside light. And this is uh, the, the, the method that we have uh, developed for that. And it turns out it, it works very, very well and is, is nicely efficient. Is a conditioned, our uh, conditioned hierarchical equations of motion for the density operator of these atoms inside these cavities. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Walter, for this great talk. So we indeed have time for the questions or comments. So uh, please, you can also write them to the chat if you feel like. So let me ask the question while the other ones are still thinking and then uh, somehow I cannot avoid asking this question. You might probably guess already what it is, right? So when we talk about the measurement scheme interpretations for open quantum systems and for the trajectories, right? And probably you also remember that there was a paper by Lajos Diossi uh, more than 10 years ago by now who yeah. thought who solved the problem, but then turned out that it was not really a solution. So my question is that, have you solved now this problem? And if yes, to which extent? No, no, we, we have solved a different problem. <laughs> okay, okay. Of course, of course the, the, the motivation is, of course, to, to shed more light into this whole question. How, do, how can we combine continuous measurement and non-Markovian quantum trajectories? Here, here we, we found a cheap, a cheap way out, in a way, if you like. Uh, we, Everything is really based on standard Markovian measurement theory. So there are, we, we really start from a, from a well understood uh, and, and in terms of interpretation, clearly understood uh, Markovian quantum trajectory for both the atoms and the cavity modes inside the cavity. And, and from that, we eliminate the cavity degrees of freedom such that the atomic dynamics becomes non-Markovian. Yet it is conditioned on the measurement record outside the cavity, which however is a, is, is a Markovian measurement, if you like. Yeah. So it is, it is a combination of, of well-known Markovian measurement theory and still non-Markovian quantum trajectories because uh, the atomic dynamics, after all, is non-Markovian. 
And, and it, I, it does not, it, 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 we, we're still looking at it. Of course, the next question would be how can we maybe relate this, uh, this, this conditioned um, density matrix evolution to non-Markovian pure state trajectories. And that is actually something we still, we still look at. And, and I would say the last word is not quite <laughs> spoken here. So we are really Precisely, if I understand correctly, the point here is that uh, the condition states, if you look for the atom only, you, you have the density matrices, you have the mixed, you show the purity. Yeah. The things come in, you show the purity. So you show that in the bad cavity limit, I mean, the purity remains one, but then when you go for the good quality limit for the non Markovian case, then the purity goes up and down for the conditioned state. Yes, that's right. Yes, the, the atomic state is a mixed state. Indeed, the conditioned, that the conditioned atom cavity state is a pure state in, in ideal measurement situations. Uh, yet, because of, of correlations, obviously, the conditioned atomic state, the non Markovian conditioned atomic state, I will state indeed, yes. Right, right. Because I remember some old pseudomote papers also. So of course, there you can easily generate the pseudomote with the yeah. Yeah, this, this is this is the pseudomote picture, of course. Yes, in a, in a sense, it is it is the pseudomote picture, and and on the level of of atoms plus cavity, indeed, you're back in 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 well understood and standard Markov measurement theory. Right. Thank you. So are the other questions or comments from the audience? I have one, one uh, formal question concerning this, uh, this uh, hierarchy you, you, you presented, Walter. So uh, is it true that, uh, of course, the hierarchy is infinite, as, as you said. Is it true that well, if I formally, formally care about you know, all terms and I, 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 I solve the hierarchy, then the evolution for this rho, rho zero zero is completely positive. However, if I if I truncate the hierarchy at some point, I, I, I immediately lose complete positivity for this rho zero zero. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I would, but well, yeah, there, there are now different levels of, of answers, I guess. Um, the um, the zero zero component is actually derived as, a, as an average over pure states, as an ensemble over pure states, which means it is, it is positive. It is, um, yeah, okay. it, it may not be completely positive, but it is positive for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so there's no issue with, with positivity violation. I cannot, I cannot, uh, I guess, uh, Honestly. Okay, so even even if you truncate the hierarchy, yes. rho zero zero is always positive. It is positive, yes. I see. Okay. Yes, yes. by by construction, yes. Um, so so positivity, I guess, is is not an issue here. Okay, so positivity is guaranteed. Yes, by construction, yes, yes, because we we come from from an average over pure states. Yes. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Robert. so I think it's time to move on. So thank you, Walter, once again for an excellent talk. Thank you.